New York and on the new Hot 97 app, Ebro in the Morning. On Hot 97. Uh, Ebro in the Morning, <laughs> Laura Stiles, Rosenberg, BX Zone, Yo, the kid Daytona, what up? Daytona, I'm yes. out here. What up, man? Y'all, y'all my family, man. I've been knowing y'all 10 plus yeah, joints. Say, at least a decade. Yeah, 10 joints, man. Well, I, like I came in with Scythe like around 2007. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know I met everybody. I met yeah. you like around that at that same time, like yeah. when you first, first I think, came I think, through. I think I met you Later, a year right? after. Yeah, because you had done a joint previous that I didn't know that I like did I, before I'd gotten to meet you. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, then we've been rocking ever since. And now you got a couple scorch of records out here. Yeah, man. Um, did a couple, did a, you know, did a chorus on a, on a hit record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like that first started just for me, like expanding my palette, like from... Like not only being an artist, but also just being a songwriter as well. So that joint, whole joint started for me just strictly on my songwriting vibe. And you talking about bring them things, French Montana featuring Pharrell. Love that record, great and, record, um, great too. You know they they liked how I sounded so much. They kept my voice on it. So after that, so that was just the record you wrote it first. Yeah, I wrote I wrote the record first. And then uh, after that, it was like, you know, just seeing the love that, that y'all was showing me, like, and it was just like, yo, man, it's time for me just to go super, super, extremely hard. So now, now you have been a part of the production writing thing with Harry Fraud since the beginning, right? Um, I, I, I known Fraud since 2011. Okay. Um, and I kind of like ushered in because like my class was like the Action Bronsons, you know, J. Cole, like just that whole realm. And um, we clicked on just being on a New York kind of vibe. We clicked on that. And I've been around Fraud since then. So it was just like a natural progression for us just to work together. So is that normally what you guys are doing is he's cooking, you're writing some ideas, he's we just, we just be in the studio and it's like, once I get a vibe, I just go and record it. You know, and he puts it in the vault sometimes. You know, it, it gets kind of crazy because it's like, what am I going to keep from? Sometimes I'll be like, what am I going to keep from myself? Yeah. What are the joints that we're going to give away, you know? And I'm um, just even outside of fraud, like, uh, I got some really big placements coming up with, um, like, mega superstar artists. And it's just like... I what, just, did it come from... Did, now, let's, let's stop on that for uh -huh. a second. Did that come from Bring Them Things? Because, you know, we... we it was interesting. Bring them things popped off. Yeah. But at the same time, you weren't listed as a feature on the record. Mm -hmm. So it was it was this beautiful gift because your voice was on it and people knew it was you. Yeah. But at the same time, there wasn't like a video with you yeah, standing yeah, yeah. next to French Montana. So take us through that and how it's kinda is that what led to these other opportunities? Um, yeah, like I just did that, you know, like for French and um you know, everybody was coming up to me like, yo, why they ain't put you on it? But I understand. I've, I've been around for a minute, so I get the politics of it all. So I wasn't even tight. The fact that Flex was shouting my name every night for like two months, that joint meant the whole world to me. You know what I'm saying? Ebro showing love and everybody's just genuinely happy for me. So after that. Um, I had just gotten a calls from a bunch of publishing companies and they wanted me to come out to L.A. and uh, write some things. And I was just in my zone. And then that led to like now it's just like I got this record that three people are fighting over, you know, just off grind and it's just and this isn't a fraud record more. this is something nah, else nah, this, this is just something you wrote something else this whole something some so basically th this is an interesting situation though because there are a lot of people in hip hop yeah. who when they went through exactly what you went through. Mm -hmm. When the people started coming up and going, yo, why ain't French put you blah, 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 that could have taken them down a whole crazy. Yo, and taking them and <laughs> taking them down a whole path of again. negativity yeah. too. Where you're like, yo, yeah. the game's fucked up. You know how many rappers I've seen fall yeah. apart? Yeah. Because the first time that happens, they're like, nah, everyone's out to get you. The game's fucked up. They don't want you to win. Yeah. When in fact, nah, they, you were just you were just behind the scenes. And they want you to feed into that. Like I even I did an interview. And and they try to like with, with some people I know like blogs that a blog that I know that was messing with me for a minute and they try to spin into a whole negative thing. And I was like, yo, dog, like, what are you doing? Like, you can't, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, just trying to just be negative off of and I just curved that whole situation. And, um, you know, like me and French, you know, like he's doing his album right now. So we definitely going to work. You know, again, and he always cooking with fraud. Yeah, he loves always. fraud, it's a, it's, and, it's, it's, and he's like and he's from the Bronx. So genuinely, like you know, I always want anybody from the Bronx to win. You know what I'm saying? So, um, with that being said, I know that bring like you know 
Rosenberg has been waving the Daytona flag from day one. You know what I'm saying? Flag's so, dusty. I need a new flag. Yo, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so he like he knows <laughs> what it is. That's how long it's been waved. And he knows he knows like how talented I am, and and I know that when I did bring them things, that wasn't the end or the be or the Daytona. So it was just like cool. That was kind of my introduction to the mainstream underground. Been knowing who I am now. Mainstream, they look, oh word, the kid Daytona. Okay, you know what I mean? Now we back, and I feel like a whole brand new person. That's beautiful though. Yeah. Um, so um, the record you have now lately with Harry Fraud, which yeah. is fire. I got a joint. That's like a street joint. But the joint that people really going crazy over, I don't know if you heard it yet, yeah, Ebro. It's this joint called Litcoin. And, um, oh, Litcoin. I heard Litcoin. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, lit. Every club, every night in the city, play like it's four or five. I'm getting Snapchats from yeah, joints yeah. just going crazy over the record. But you know, and you know how he really knows is playing in every club every night. Because I'm, I'm in every club <laughs> every, every night. night. <laughs> you know now, what I'm are saying? You, are you working on a project for yourself? <laughs> yeah, um, I'm, I'm coming out with a joint uh, uh, album called Super Valid. So what we're doing right now is I'm just flooding, flooding, flooding. I got records for days. So I'm just flooding it, and people are seeing that I'm working. People's like, oh, all right, Daytona's serious this time. You know what I mean? Right, so right. by the time everything comes back around and it all makes sense, they'll be ready for it. So um, Valid. Yeah. As valid out of valid was originally out of uptown. I was an uptown Bronx term. Wasn't mm. it? That's how it started, didn't it? Um, valid is because that's where I heard it first. Yeah, I mean, I heard I valid mean, like salad back in the day, <laughs> and then and then people just started saying valid. But I mostly hear people in the BX use that term. Um, actually, you know, I was like trying to come up with names for my project, right? And. So I'm I'm I just pull up you know anywhere it's like it'll be like I, I pulled up to One Oak you know shout out Richie Stevie you know those are my guys Jeski you know so I pull up and it's like 80 people outside and I just walk right in and you know what I mean like my man was like yo B like I walked in with my boy he's like yo you super valid <laughs> and I was like I was like that's the name of my album there right it is, right yo there. that's super incredible valid. and by the way that's so funny that your friend did that because like. There's one thing I can say about Daytona at any point. He could be hot <laughs> at the moment. He could not have had a record in a minute. Trust me when I tell you when we pull up, we're going to walk right into the club. <laughs> <laughs> Trust. That, that's hilarious that that's where it came from. And it, uh, mostly fraud? Is it a mix? Because Litcoin is not fraud. Nah, Litcoin is uh, produced by the Gifted Program. Um, and mostly fraud because, you know, we cooking up. And that's that's my guy. Like, fraud is, is the truth anyway. But I kind of want to expand outside of that, too, because at the same same time fraud about to go crazy this shit. Yeah, he got his own like his joint is like when y'all see it it's it's amazing like i'm proud you know of that guy right there so you know i got fraud on there i got a bunch of other cats um dope features we still in kind of like the infancy of it all like as i'm kind of like starting to put it together but it's definitely going to be you know hit like as soon as the some you know as soon as the weather breaks Look, man, we're proud of you, man. It's good to see you. Thank Kid you, Daytona. Bro. Um, you know, let's get the record on. We'll play which one you wanna play? Lick, yeah, lick? Play that you gotta play Lick. We're playing both. We're playing both. Playing both. Yeah. Okay, I mean, both that's what I'm talking Yo, about. They're, they're both they're super both valid. valid. So and tell us real quick for this uh for this summertime, because you are you, a lot of people may not know this. You're you're not you're a man of the of the club. You're a man of the streets. Uh -huh. You're a man of the ladies. Oh Lord. You're a man of fashion. <laughs> what's what's about to pop off? Like what's what's your not just I'm not talking about music. But just stylistically, like, where's shit about to be? What's the next wave? I mean, me, I don't really, uh, I don't really be thinking on that vibe. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, cats already start biting my scarf. I've been doing this since 2013. You could check facts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I've already peeped that. You know what I mean? So it's like, um, with the way the scarf's just, done, the I mean, style of the scarf, I'm or the just, general I'm just scarf. I'm talking game. about like you know designer scarfs on your head. Like I didn't see nobody doing that. You know what I mean? So when I when I started peeping, there, I was like, oh, that's ill. You know what I'm saying? Like people are you know knowing what it is. You know what I'm saying? And so for me, I just always try to like let's see what I'm gonna do different, because I never just want to look like somebody else. You know? That's like cast out here. Everybody is like looking the same. You know what I mean? Like copying each other and that's not you know where i come from uptown it's like you know you doing other things and oh he doing that i'm gonna do this um as far as new york hip-hop yeah before we let you out of here you are somebody that are watching and listening to a lot of material mm -hmm. and writing songs and in studios and clubs and how do you feel about uh new york hip-hop right new york hip-hop is in an incredible space right now um 
just in terms of even like different styles and like you got a boogie and then you got six nine and you got french and you got joey badass you know like these are all different cardi b cardi b you know what i mean like and that's bx too you gotta talk about that cardi we yo they've been fronting on us for a minute you know what i'm saying now we really who's they they i mean you know queens in brooklyn yo fronting heavy (laughs) you know what i'm saying so so now you know we we got it we got a whole vibe coming through and um i feel like new york hip-hop is definitely in in an incredible space right now and i'm you know it, we all knew it was going to come back around, but I just feel like we just have to switch it up. You know what I mean? Now I feel well, I like... Too, you, I think what's not talked about is you have an era of the 90s, which was so New York, as yeah. well as L.A., right? L.A. had their stuff and New York had their stuff. And then those sounds and styles got co-opted by other regions, exactly. and then they started to pop, and then they but you evolved put, those sounds. But you then, pointed out something the other day off the air, Ebro, that's really the truest thing, is that people don't talk about that New York... The New York audience loves commercial shit. Yeah. So we act like New York hasn't been popping when really there's been great music the last seven years. Nicki Minaj. Like, I feel like when when a New York artist pops. New York likes winners, B. New York wants you to be winning. And then, like, yo, people just even forget, like, like 50 is so big, you like you know he's New York, but nobody even like be like, right. you know what I'm saying? Same thing with Nikki. It's like, yo, she's so Queens, but at the same time, she got so big. It's like, yo, I'm not oh, even, nice. you know, yeah, exactly. Right, right. You know, they Fat never Joe. go nowhere. Fat Joe, come on. Still dude. putting out records. Come Still on, having hits. Had a number one record last year? Yeah. yeah. Rem, yeah. Come on, man. So, you know, like at the same time, I just feel like, the, like that boom bap era is like, I don't think people mainstream wise want to hear that no more i don't so even know i don't even know i think anytime you're trying to be something that mm. already happened because mm. you're, you're trying to recreate a thing that was already phenomenal mm-hmm. i think the odds of you striking out are very high yeah because you're trying to it's like being as i guess striking out's the best term it's like being at bat and you're you know trying to hit a home run. You're trying to hit a home run instead of just out. trying to get on base or yep. waiting for yeah. your pitch. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's, your the, pitch. that's the biggest problem well, is that's, people. That's what I think Daytona's done a nice job of recently is waiting for your pitch. Man. Because especially because you've been in the game for a long time. Mm-hmm. So a lot and it's of, easy to get discouraged. It's easy to be yep. like, you know what, man? I'm going to go, you know, work at UPS. You know what I'm saying? Like, like right. when things, you know, when <laughs> when things aren't going so well, you just got to, like, keep that faith, man. And as long as you just keep climbing up the ladder, even if it's baby steps, it's like it's one more step closer to your goal. So it's like, you know, why give up? Especially when you know, like, come on, man, I've been around greats, you know what I mean? Cypher Sounds, Busta Rhymes, you know, I remember being 18 in the studio with Busta, Pharrell, Q-Tip, Raekwon. Like, these are people that it's like just being a fly on the wall and just like really like, y'all can't believe I'm next to these people and I gotta be here for a reason. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of like what kept me motivated and kept me going. Well, you and you were raised by your grandmother, right? Yeah. You started out with no parents. You weren't yeah, raised yeah, by yeah. parents. My, 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 uh, my mom passed away when I was three years old. Uh, I was living in Antigua, that's where I'm from. Um, so my mom passed away at three and then my dad just got like super, super depressed. So they sent me to the Bronx to, to live with my grandmother. And you know, my dad never got back right from that situation. So my grandmother raised me, you know what I mean? Um, Your dad never came back around? Nah, nah, never, never. But at the same time, that led me to just have faith. Like my connection, you know, with the higher spirits has always just been like that since I could remember, you know what I mean? Um, so having my grandmother raise me and she's super West Indian, super gully, like to this day, my grandmother's 86, I'm still afraid of her, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you know, she just raised me, no BS, and you know, always told me to to just work hard, you know what I mean? Like she, she left her, she left Antigua at 18 to come to New York and brought her whole family here. So like, that's my biggest inspiration. Yeah. Yo, Kid Daytona, ladies and gentlemen. What's the name of Project Super Valid? Super Valid. Dropping? Summer. Early, though. Nobody, like, you notice that? That's the thing now. <laughs> Nobody, no. they'll give you a season. Yeah. Maybe a month. Yeah, but you don't want to, absolutely no, no. not. They're not yeah. You never the data. know, you know what I mean? So you, you want to make sure. Now, is this an album or a project or a mixtape? <laughs> A playlist. Playlist? Playlist. 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 Honestly, all that is the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a now. bunch of songs by Daytona yeah. that are going to be dope. Exactly. 